good, Chris? Okay. Good morning. Welcome to our worship this morning. It's great to be in God's house and worship together. We've got another beautiful day on Cape Cod. We had about a little over oh, 20 folks okay. with us this morning uh, outside. So weather was great. We moved in to, out from under the trees into the sun, so everybody was nice and warm. Uh, Gary got to be inside the building. We played Who's the Mystery um, Musician, as the people couldn't see him playing, but it was a great time. Welcome those of you who are worshiping with us online this morning. Uh, it's great to be in God's house to worship together this morning. Just a few announcements uh, before we get started. You can see a great uh, response to our Operation Christmas Child Christmas boxes. We're going to be dedicating all of those uh, this morning during our prayer time. Uh, few other, with Advent starting, we are going to be having, uh, uh, in a safe distance, uh, um, Advent wreath-making workshops, so be looking for your emails for in information about that, how you can sign up. We need people who want to participate in that, sign up ahead of time so we can purchase the kits, the right number of kits for folks, and Robin Carey is going to be leading uh, the Advent wreath-making, and hopefully during Advent we'll incorporate into worship for those of you worshiping online some home lighting of your own Advent wreaths at home as we light our wreaths uh, here uh, in worship during that time. Um, it's another announcement I needed to make, but I can't remember what it is, so maybe it wasn't that important. It'll come to me later. Also, just again, as, as a reminder, folks who are worshiping here with us, uh, for safety purposes, we ask you just to reflect uh, prayerfully or worshipfully during the singing of the hymns. Our leaders will uh, be leading us in the singing, but we ask you just not to sing from the pews. Understand that uh, the pews are really hard. Uh, we were very insensitive and pulled all the cushions up for you. Too many people were sleeping, so we brought you back to the hardwood, and I've still got my cushion chair up here. So, But if you do find yourself getting uncomfortable and you'd like to stand during any of the songs, we won't announce it, but uh, you, you feel free to do so uh, if you like, if you need for comfort measure. We will invite you to stand during the reading of scripture um, uh, during the service. So as we get started, uh, let us join together. Let's prayerfully offer our worship to God as Gary and uh, Shelley lead us in Come Ye Thankful People Come. Please join me in the opening prayer found in your bulletin. Lord, Lord 
Be with us this day as we gather to celebrate your love for us. Challenge and prepare us to be your disciples in this aching and hurting world. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of prayer is, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. for a time of prayer, we'd like to open this music video that reminds us how we can be great, not just say great. Okay, sir. Shall we go to God in a time of prayer? Gracious and holy God, we do thank you for and praise you for your holiness, 
for your mightiness. You've created this whole wonderful world, made it good as we live in it. And you've, um, you, as great as you are, and as uh, so much greater than the vast expanse of our creation, you care about every aspect of our lives. You know our struggles, you know our trials, all that we face in life. You've come to live among us, and you have experienced those things in the person, the person of Jesus that we go through in life, the ups and downs. We thank you for your, in you, and we thank you for your love that doesn't just come and go and um, when we disobey, or, but you're always there with us through thick and thin, no matter what we've done. And we give you thanks for your grace that is always available to us. And Lord, help us. We pray that we would receive your grace, that we would confess those ways we've messed up your creation, that we've messed up our relationships with one another. We've not loved one another as we love ourselves. We have uh, not followed you and loved you with our whole being. We have uh, not taken care of this, the good stewards of this creation of which you've called us to take care of and to live in. So we ask for your forgiveness. We confess before you all the ways that we have failed to follow you and to love you and to seek your forgiveness. We confess before we for you and we thank you for your forgiveness that you give. So renew us, cleanse our hearts, give us a new start in seeking to follow you and being the people you've called us to be, being your church here on earth and uh, seeking to bring about your kingdom and your ways here on earth as they're done in heaven. Lord, we uh, pray uh, and offer to you concerns who are on our hearts. We pray for those of our church family, those in our own lives, our own families, neighbors, friends who are struggling, who may be uh, sick with uh, coronavirus or, or may have, be dealing with other uh, illnesses or diseases or uh, facing cancer or um, need of surgeries, Lord, who are fearful for uh, the struggles they face, who may be of lost jobs, who are struggling from various we lift them up to you, Lord. May we be faithful to pray for them. We pray you would work in their lives, in their situation. Give them a sense of calm, a sense of peace. Give them the hope and comfort in knowing your presence is with them. We pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones. We pray that they would have a sense of your peace and your comfort. Lord, we pray for our, our leaders of, our, of the nations around the world of our nation, of our state, of our um, communities and towns. We pray for guidance and wisdom for them. May they seek to lead in ways of righteousness. May the decisions they make uh, be for the best interest of those who you have placed under their authority, seeking to provide for needs, providing justice and, and uh, basic necessities that are um, needed by folks. Lord, we lift uh, them to you. We pray that you would work uh, in their lives. Lord, we pray for all that's wrong in our, in our nation and in our world. For those who are struggling, we lift them all to you. As we commit ourselves to you, to follow you with our whole being, we lift before you and entrust to your care those who are on our hearts. Shall we join together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We prepare to give thanks to God for all of God's blessings. We want to start by giving thanks to God for the opportunity to be a blessing to others. And we give thanks for all of the uh, hands that have these Christmas boxes. They will all be given to children around the world, and hopefully we pray that they will be a blessing uh, to children at Christmas time and a sign of God's love in their lives. So as we give thanks for the ways God has blessed us and offer our gifts and offerings back to God, we give thanks for this. and. And after the prayer of dedication, then uh, Barbara and Shelley are going to lead us in our offertory and Thanksgiving song. So shall we pray as we dedicate these 
boxes. Uh, so if you're online or in person, I invite you to hold your hands out as a blessing upon uh, these gifts. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity to be a blessing uh, to children around the world who will receive these Operation, Ch Operation Christmas child boxes. So Lord, we thank you for each person who filled a box as they uh, prayerfully and joyfully purchased each of the items that are contained uh, in the boxes, as they maybe were thinking of the children, the boys or girls of different ages that will be receiving each of these gifts. We pray um, for each of the children who will receive these gifts. We pray that it may bring uh, joy to them as they, uh, maybe this is the only Christmas gift they'll receive uh, this year, who knows. But we pray that it'll bring happiness and joy into their lives in whatever situations these children are in. We pray for their families as they seek to provide for their well-being. Um, Lord, we pray that as the children enjoy these gifts and the items that are uh, in them, and as they that they would um, help them to sense your love that you have for them and our love that goes out to them. We ask your blessing on these gifts. Give you thanks for those who have pack the boxes, and we ask your blessings upon those who will distribute them to the ministry of Samaritan's Purse that oversees this whole ministry, and again, a blessing upon the children each their, and their families who will receive each of these gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. want to share a scripture passage before we sing. This is in Psalm 9, chapter, chapter 9, verse 1. And it says, I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Thank you, uh, Shelley and Barbara. What a great uh, way to share our talents and time for God. Um, we're continuing our journey into the parables of Matthew today. If you recall, <clears throat> last week, uh, the parable was about the ten brides, maidens who got oil lamps. And when it came time for the service, five brought their lamps, or all brought the lamps, but only five brought the oil, which made them functional. So along those same lines, um, we're going to read from Matthew 25, 14 to 30. 
The kingdom of heaven is like a man who was living, leaving on a trip. He called his servants and handed his possessions over to them. To one he gave five valuable coins, and to another he gave two, and yet another he only gave one. He gave to each servant according to that man's ability, and he left on his journey. After the man left, the servants who had five valuable coins took them, went to work doing business with them. He gained five more. In the same way, the one who had only had two valuable coins gained two more. But the servant who had only received one dug a hole in the ground, buried his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those trusted servants returned and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five valuable coins came forward with five additional coins. He said, Master, you gave me five coins. Look, I've gained five more. His master replied, Excellent. You are a good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I'll put you in charge of much. Come celebrate with me. The second servant also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two valuable coins. Look, I've gained two more. His master replied, well done. You are a good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I'll put you in charge of much. Come celebrate with me. Now the one who had received one valuable coin came and said, Master, I knew that you were a hard man. You harvest grain where you haven't sown. You gather crops where you haven't spread seed. So I was afraid, and I hid my valuable coin in the ground. Here, you have what's yours. His master replied, you evil and lazy servant. You knew that I harvest grain where I haven't sown, and I gather crops where I haven't spread seed. In that case, you should have turned my money over to the bankers so that I, when I returned, you could give me what belonged to me with interest. Therefore, take from him the valuable coin and give it to the one who has 10 coins, then those who have much will receive more and they will have more than they need. But as for those who don't have much, even the little bit they have will be taken away from them. Now, take the worthless servant and throw him out into the farthest darkness. People there would be weeping and grinding their teeth. These are the words of God. Praise be to God. Our hymn is, um, What Gift Can We Bring?
Thank you, Barbara, for you and Shelley for the special music. That was beautiful. We're taught as, you know, as Christians, we're supposed to have a humble attitude and uh, um, think more with humility with ourselves. That's an attribute that we lift up. Well, I want you to put that aside. I want you to have an attitude of bragging right now because I got some questions that I want to ask you. Self-reflective. I'm not going to ask you to respond out loud, unless you're at home and you want to respond out loud, we can't hear you, so talk all you want uh, there. But um, what talent, what skill do you have? I don't want you to be humble. A lot of times we're thinking, think about what we don't do so well, but I know all of you have some skill, some talent, some ability. Um, this would have been either last weekend or this weekend, if we were under normal conditions, the church yesterday or last Saturday would have been filled with crafts galore and delicious uh, meals happening in the um, fellowship hall, So, we, and they would have all been made by so many uh, people in our congregation, so, so many people who have that gift of uh, crafts and the ability to make that. And I know some in our church are uh, delicious cooks because I've tasted a lot of your cooking, and I'm, uh, I know uh, that that's, that's good there. Just the, um, us having this service this morning, for those of you online, we've got a person very skilled on the computers, and, uh, and there's a lot of um, um, challenges she has to go through. So her abilities allow this online service to take place. We've been blessed with um, musical uh, gifts uh, uh, this morning, last week, each Sunday. Uh, we have so much that adds to our worship as we hear the special music and the leading of the music by Gary. Um, we have uh, the, our grounds. We've got a beautiful place here as the church. The, uh, those who take care of the grounds, those who do the landscaping, uh, the flowers, the shrubs. It, it's, it's so so that's, that's not just anybody can do that. I can mow the grass and that's it, but I don't uh, do so well as to keep uh, things um, uh, beautiful. So you all have some kind of ability and, and gift that you've been given. Jesus our text this morning, Jesus told a story of a wealthy landowner who was preparing for a long journey. He called his three servants together and divided his, his money between them, each according to their ability. To one servant, our scripture, the uh, particular translation we were using, or version we're using today, referred to um, uh, it to money, but others, more common ones, are referred to it as talents. So to one servant, he gave five talents meaning, again, meaning a sum of money. To a second one, he gave two talents. To a third one, he gave one. Why is life like that? We're all equal in God's eyes. We're all granted equal rights under the Constitution. Um, it, it authorizes everyone to have equal rights. It's not all, everyone hasn't had that experience, but it's written into the Constitution. We all just, we just had an election, and we all our votes counted equally in the election, but when it comes to abilities, we're different. God simply did not make us all the same. There's some people who have been given five talents, and uh, some who only have one. And, you know, I'm envious of those who have the five talents. It seems there's um, nothing they can't do. Some people have a greater intellectual capacity than others. There's some who can have the ability to project and articulate their thoughts well. For others of us, and I'm reminding regularly, do uh, ums and ahs and, and really uh, uh, make it hard to listen to, to try to get our thoughts out. Some, uh, some people have the ability to earn more than others do. There's some who have more physical uh, grace and skill than others do. But rather than fretting over what seems to be the unfairness of life and wondering why each one was given a different number of talents, the important thing to remember from our... Um, reading this morning from the parable is that each servant was given something. No one was left idle. You may not be a five-talent person, but you have some talent. You have some ability. You have some resource you can offer to God. We all do. I would imagine that there's a whole lot more 
one and two talent people in this world than there are five talent people. There's some people who just seem to have it all, seem to be able to do anything they put their mind to, or just it come, things come naturally to them. But most of us, that's probably, I dare say, is not the case for the majority of us. We're more of those one and two talent, like the one and two talent says. But no matter how little we think we have to offer, we all have something we can offer to God. Jesus once, in another uh, scripture, commended a poor widow for her offering of two small coins, even though monetarily her offering was probably the smallest offering put in the plate that Sunday. But she was commended because what she gave was all that she had. She gave her all to God. The landowner in our parable this morning entrusted his wealth to his servants and he divided it among them to manage, to manage it for him. Then he went on a long journey. And then when he ret returned, he called together his three servants and asked them to give an accounting of how they used his wealth. The five-talent man invested his talent and was able to return five additional talents. I think you financial folks, that's a 100% return, right? Am I right there, Bob? So the two-talent man did the same. He doubled his money. The uh, landowner's response to both of those were well done, good and faithful servant. The one-talent man stepped in, stepped forward, and he said, sir, when he stepped before God, or the, land, the owner, he said, I knew you, that you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow. So he returned to him that which had originally been given to him. The landowner was incensed and used words like lazy and wicked. Angrily, he took the talent back and gave it to the servant, who now had ten. This parable, as Wayne said, is uh, similar to la the one we read last week. It's about readiness for G being ready for Jesus' return. Just as the master left on a long trip, Jesus ascended back into heaven after he was resurrected from the dead. And when Jesus went back to heaven, he gave all of his followers, he gave all of us the gift of the Holy Spirit to help us in trying and living as Jesus' disciple and in carrying out Jesus' work here in the world. So in the meantime, while we wait for Jesus to return, when we believe it will happen, we have no idea when, so while we're waiting, what are we to be doing? We have to work, or we have work to do as we anticipate Jesus' return. We are to continue the work of building God's kingdom here on earth. That includes doing God's will. It means sharing the good news of God's love that's offered to all people. It means building up and encouraging one another, our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, and all people we come uh, in contact with. Each one of us has been given some gift, some talent, some skill, some amount of time, something. We all have something we can offer back to God in some way. It doesn't have to be a natural talent. It could be a skill you are trained in or educated in uh, for your work. It could be your financial or physical resources. It could be a willingness to set your mind on doing something that will address a need, a need in the world or a need a particular person you know is experiencing. I'm grateful for the many ways you use your talents to serve God here in the ministries of the church. But I know uh, even beyond that, many use, of you use your talents and, and, your, uh, and offer back to God through your work, through your neighborhood, through your community involvement. In our scripture lesson, the master responded to the servant who had gained the two talents in the same way he did to the one who had gained five talents. It didn't matter that one was given more than the other. Well done, good and faithful servant, he said to both of them. You have been faithful in a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. The third servant, though, was scolded, not because he did not multiply his talents, but because he didn't bother to use it at all. He was called wicked and lazy. and He wasn't called wicked in the way New Englanders, New Englanders use wicked. It wasn't wicked good, like a wicked good pizza, it was wicked bad, is what he was referring to. So I asked, what are you doing with what God has given to you? The Gore Company, the maker of Gore-Tex, is listed as one of Fortune 100's best companies to work for in 2020. This is the 21st year that Gore has received this ranking. 
Here's how Gore describes himself, or the company describes itself. We strive to make Gore an exciting and rewarding place to work for all associates. One of our fundamental beliefs is that individuals have the opportunity to reach their full potential and that we create an inclusive environment in which all associates are valued for their unique contribution, skills, differences, and talents. Gore has no titles for its employees. All employees are considered associates, and they all have an equal chance to be leaders. At the end of each year, the employees are asked this question. What did you do to add value to the company? What if we regularly asked ourselves this same question regarding our Christian commitment, regarding our discipleship? What value did I or did you add to the kingdom of God? God has entrusted you with physical resources, with time, with some kind of talent or skill, with an ability. What are you doing with what you have been given? I hope we all would have the attitude of the five and two talent servants in our scripture, that we are willing to use what God has given to us in any way we can as best we can. But sadly, we are too often like that one talent servant, and we waste away and don't use the gifts that we've been given. So for those times, we're, li- we're more like that one talent servant. I invite you this morning to join with me in praying this prayer of confession. It's in your bulletin if you're here with us. It'll also be projected on the screen for those online. Let us pray together this prayer. I hope it's on there. Is it this? Okay, let us pray. You asked for my hands that you might use them for your purpose. I gave them for a moment and then withdrew them for the work was hard. You asked for my mouth to speak out against injustice. I gave you a whisper that I might not be accused. You asked for my eyes to see the pain of poverty. I closed them for I did not want to see. You asked for my life that I might not might work through that you might work through me. I gave a small part that I might not get too involved. Lord, forgive my calculated efforts to serve you only when it's convenient for me to do so, only in those places where it's safe to do so, and only in the, with those people who make it easy to do so. Father, forgive me. Renew me. Send me out as a usable instrument that I might take seriously the meaning of your cross. Amen. Yeah, uh, Barry and Shelley will lead us in our hymn of response. Take my life and let it be.
great to see you today and to be in God's house and worship today. I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope as you go through this week that you sense God um, uh, leading you and nudging you and how to use uh, your time, your resource, your gifts to be a blessing to someone and offering. And, and I pray you experience the joy of knowing you're offering what you've been given back to God and God's glory. Let us offer, please stand and offer our Northside benediction to one another uh, to the blessing of our Northside benediction. Have a great week. Hey, do you want to put up a candle? Can you get a picture of the box here and stuff? I'll put the